بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدنا علما ورزقنا فهما واجعلنا من الراشدين <coughs> الحمد لله وشكر الله carrying on with our topic with regards to the glitz and glamour of modern spirituality and this is something subhanallah that has taken a grip of the ummah and people are thirsty people are in need people are in search of a deeper meaning people are intrigued people have understood that there is more to our physicality and sadly a lot of the spiritual aspects from within our deen have been stripped away over time and a lot of people feel that we've just been left with the outward mundane practices and so subhanallah unfortunately what has started to happen is people wanting you know this i mean muslims wanting to experience a level of spirituality start dabbling and start researching and start you know connecting some dots and trying to find ways and places where they can get these experiences from and then try to see um, <clears throat> you know if that actually works for them and unfortunately what happens along the way is that um, they sort of are driven away from the deen okay they're driven away from the core teachings uh, with regards to aqidah uh, you know our, our creed and our understanding and our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a lot of the times um, you know they fall into dubious practices of spirituality certain types of meditations certain types of um, you know uh, programs that that are available online and and they'll just go and subscribe to anything without any deeper understanding of it and the sad reality and the sad fact is that our deen has so much spirituality in it our deen is is spiritual okay that unfortunately we have really disconnected ourselves from it the uh, messages of spirituality have been around and uh, you know more so in this day and age there is a lot of books available you know you just have to be searching in the right place and you will find so much information out there um, but it's not being extrapolated it's not being translated it's not being taught openly in the way that it's accessible on the open market and so one of those things that you know inshallah i want to touch on today is this concept of affirmations and affirmations are something subhanallah that are there in the in the western world of spirituality and it is any statement that you say about yourself i am and so alhamdulillah this has been going on for a while <clears throat> i have a lot of students um that you know i i refer back to and you know we have these exchanges in in our classes to try and make sense because i get this uh, feeling you know from a lot of people that say that affirmations are haram affirmations are you know they come from non-islamic sources and as a result of it, it it becomes completely you know you you can't touch it okay fine i mean what do they say so when they start saying things like i am you know i create my I am able to create my own reality and I am this and I am that those things are haram anything that that you know um, gives yourself that that um, that quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then of course it's going to be haram okay and again it does not mean that you know if if you say wrong things it doesn't have to have a religion it doesn't have to have a basis that is Islamic or non-Islamic you know you could have a, a bow and arrow which might be a sunnah and then you use that to shoot at people and harm them this becomes haram yet subhanallah we know that it is a sunnah act if it is there for your preservation um, you are allowed to use it and so affirmations we need to understand one thing is our deen is based on affirmations our deen is based on affirmations but again subhanallah you will not find our ulama or mashaykh talking about these things there is a search and there is a yearning amongst the the ummah of of seeking another way of learning our deen and we need to understand this that today and more so in this day and age we have connected ourselves um you know online everything is available online we don't have to leave our houses and it's going to become increasingly so also okay and it's going to become more and more that we are stuck in our homes and our devices are going to feed us information and the information that is available at our fingertips most of it will not be of benefit to us 
And sadly, a lot of that information, like I've just said at the beginning, will mislead and will misguide because there is no backing from the deen with regards to it. But like I'm saying to you now, is that all our deen is based on the affirmation of what? Can you guess? Okay. Our affirmation of this deen is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the affirmation. And what we need to understand is you can say all the positive things that you want for yourself, whether they are true or not yet. Okay, so someone might be depressed and say, I am feeling happy. I am uplifting myself out of this. I am able to battle this. And so positive thoughts, positive words, positive comments are going to uplift you. Instead of saying, I am depressed, I am useless, I am not worthy, I am just a waste of time, no one loves me. Anything that you say over a prolonged period of time. And what I'm telling you here is not something that, oh, astaghfirullah, look at him. No, just calm down. Go and learn some basic understanding of what science is revealing to us. And we need to understand that this is all from empirical evidence. Okay, our deen is made up from what Sharia and Sunnah says. Okay, so first you find it in, in, in the Hakam and then you find it in the Sunnah. If not, then <clears throat> there's Ijma. Okay, so there is a, uh, uh, you know, a, a basic agreement and then Qiyas logical deduction. So when we come to, you know, looking at fiqh, for example, there is also empirical evidence that is utilized. So you cannot just, you know, outright throw everything that doesn't fit into your knowledge base because our deen is vast. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the hikmah, knowledge, is the lost um, the lost property of the believer is the lost riding beast of the believer okay wherever he finds it he may claim it for it is his and what is that beast for that beast is to get get on top of to utilize that knowledge and where is it taking you where is your ride taking you that ride is taking you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if not used properly it'll take you the other way and so in any journey okay now look a person can go and learn the deen a person can go and learn the deen and subhanallah in learning the deen sometimes questions and doubts happen sometimes there's abuse that happens in learning you know when in between you know uh, your peers or your teachers and as a result of it people have left the deen on that basis so now do you say that well we should we should stop learning the deen no you go and learn the deen under, you know, respectful um, establishments where people are, you know, uh, good to you and that they they understand how to work with one another. You know, gone are those days. Well, I hope they are gone. Right. But back in the day where people used to get beaten out and, you know, all the rest of it and, and bullying going on, the number of people that I see and I hear from with with serious issues. OK, in their day to day lives because of the treatment they got in their study, you know, days of study is shocking. It is absolutely shocking. So we really need to come back and we need to understand that we should not be blinkered. We should not be narrow minded. We should not just block ourselves because a lot of the people that put up objection against affirmations are actually themselves extremely emotionally frustrated and constipated. OK, I say that in the in a in a metaphorical way, constipated, because there's so much stuck energy within them. And the only thing that they can utter is just Haram, haram, haram. Okay, no. And this is why if you opened your mind and if you removed your blinkers, there is remedy for you as well. There is remedy for everyone as the Prophet ﷺ said that for every ailment there is a cure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us again and again in the Quran there is mental health. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا Verily after hardship comes ease, verily after hardship comes ease. And so this is what we need to understand, people, that you cannot negate mental health. And especially in this day and age, especially now when, you know, divorce rates are shooting up, the rates of suicide are going up, that, you know, people are losing their jobs and people are losing their livelihoods and people are losing their property and wealth. That what are we doing? Where are we positioning ourselves? We need to take this into account. We need to counter it we need to be able to talk about it and just today subhanallah the number of messages i've got with regards to narcissistic abuse going on and and, and the saddest thing subhanallah is that the people contacting me are connected to very well-known scholars 
Okay, and this is sad. That what has the deen taught these people that outside they're one thing, but then they go and they, you know, unleash that that harm, you know, from their tongues and from their hands and, and the emotional abuse and then they blackmail and emotionally blackmail, subhanallah. Okay? But they're very quick to say haram, haram to the things that, you know, are helping people to come back on the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the therapies and the and the interventions that we, we offer to people, they, subhanallah, help people to come back to Allah. How, I think just in the last week I've spoken to two or three individuals who say that we're on the verge. We're just literally holding on by the thread to our, uh, to our iman. We are feeling this extreme amount of anger and we're feeling this amount of frustration with regards to the deen. And subhanallah, 10 minutes later, 5 minutes later, it's gone. Okay, so these emotions need to come out. These emotions need to be released because in not doing so, you are only poisoning yourself. You know, there is a toxin that poisons the body, but the emotions are the poison that, that, that you know, create toxicity in your whole mind and your view of the world. And so, affirmations, okay? With regards to affirmations, there are many affirmations, for example, that are used, you know, in the Western context, where it's all about me, me, me. That, I totally agree, we should not use those. Okay, I am enough, I can do this, I am a champion. No, you're not, you're a loser, for example, right? Whatever you are. But where it changes where it changes is where you say that you know what i am able to change by the help of allah as soon as you add that sentence i can complete this task with ease inshallah it changes the whole meaning it changes the whole context and as muslims if we want to use affirmations you absolutely can as long as you say inshallah by the help of allah by the will of Allah, by the permission of Allah, the context that is right, you use that. Another thing that you can say, I am healing, Alhamdulillah, and all praises to Allah. Do you see this? And as soon as you say Alhamdulillah, and this is another secret that people need to understand, inshallah, is if you say inshallah, it means maybe it'll happen if Allah wills. <coughs> but if you say Alhamdulillah, then that Alhamdulillah says it is done. Before you start eating, Bismillah wa ala barakatillah. When you finish, Alhamdulillah, alladhi at'amana wa sakana wa ja'alana. Okay? And similarly, when you go into the bathroom, Allah man, a'udhu bika. When you finish and you come back out, Alhamdulillah. Gufranak, Alhamdulillah, alladhi adhaba anni ladha wa afani. And so, your du'as that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us are affirmations. And if one thing about affirmations is, you are taught by Allah subhanahu taught you know by the Prophet ﷺ from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you repeat these du'as. And the Prophet ﷺ used to repeat a du'a three times or seven times and eleven times. Why? This is a repetition. These are affirmations. These are affirmations. Bismillah ismi Three times. Three times. Okay? Allahumma tarabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani. Three times. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdulillah shukr kama yambaghi li jalali wajik wa li azimi sultani. Three times. Whatever it is, keep repeating morning and evening. Why? Because that is affirming within yourself. And it is affirming your belief system. It is requesting Allah that your affirmation is also a dua. And every Rabbana Dua of the Prophets is an affirmation that the Prophets repeated that over and over and over again. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin The affirmation of Adam alayhi salam. So he repeated this dua for 40 years. For 40 years when he came down from the heavens and he was on the earth and in search of uh, Sayyidah Hawa alayhi salam. He is looking for her, but never, never looked up. But this was upon his thumb. Rabbana, zalamna, anfusana. Yeah? Oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. And this was his, this was his affirmation. And similarly with, uh, with uh, Yunus alayhi salam. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimin. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu. And he continued. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi says, uh, reaffirm your belief 
with La ilaha illallah. Renew your faith with La ilaha illallah. And if anyone is feeling down with regards to the level of Iman, level of connection with Allah, then I ask you and I implore you, grab one of these, okay? And then just start La ilaha illallah, 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 La ilaha illallah. And do a thousand a day. Do 10 tasbihs a day, okay? Or maybe even 10,000 a day. If you can do 10,000 a day of this, in a week you will be deeply and spiritually connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It literally reaffirms you. It renews your faith because the Prophet sallallahu said, renew your faith with la ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. But then we say, nah, well, we'll do the la ilaha illallah, but we won't use any other affirmations. Then don't. No one is forcing you to. But then when other people use them, don't point your fingers. Don't point your grubby fingers at them and say, Haram. Okay, Mr. Haram police, Miss Haram police. What's going on? You know, if, you, if people want to live their miserable lives, then please stay in your, in your little, you know, huts and stop bothering the people around. The Ummah is trying to move on, but it's being dragged back by insecure and, and you know, brainless people, unfortunately. And it's frustrating that these are the people, subhanAllah, who are supposed to advance the deen, are, are dragging people back. Finally, we find some, you know, ladder that will help us get over. And guess what? They pull the ladder down again behind you. What a, you know, fix up, man. Anyway, and so with that comes, with that comes also that as you are going through your affirmations and, and the affirmation that is most beloved to me, okay, the affirmation that is most beloved to me. And if you think I am statements are all haram, listen to this. Allah says, Okay, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah says, I am as my servant thinks of me. I am as my servant thinks of me. Allah himself is saying, I am of what you, your opinion is of me. And if you want to sit there and say Allah makes everything haram and Allah is going to punish me and Allah is testing me and Allah, you know, does this to me and that and he's going to throw me in the hellfire, then that's where you're headed. Okay, but instead, if you have in your heart a balance, of love, mercy, compassion, the generosity and the kindness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this draws your ruh to that. It also pulls your nafs towards that in the hope of being forgiven. And then with that, you do not become complacent because the Prophet ﷺ has told us that our deen is the balance between hope and fear. So we know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. We know his qualities of Jabbar and Qahar, Al-Adl. Okay, but he is a Latif, he is Al-Khabir, he is a Salam. You know, and, and this is what we need to connect to. We need to be able to understand that all of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repeating them is an affirmation also. And so everything that we do, people, is always an affirmation. And so don't be put off by the people that are naysayers, that cannot provide enough evidence with regards to simply it's haram. Okay, fine. And then they go on, well, you know, the authors that are coming up with um, affirmations, they are, uh, they are non-Muslims. <laughs> okay, right? Uh, the Sheikha Louise Hay, for example, right? She's come up with all the affirmations that you need with regards to all the sicknesses and the ailments that are out there. What are you going to do about it? Why do you want to go and recreate the wheel? Okay, a non-Muslim created the rubber tire, for example. Now you will say, well, if a non-Muslim made the rubber tire, we shouldn't use that. We should make our own. But hold on, you're going to use the same uh, raw materials, you're going to use the same method, and you're going to make another thing. That so we are going to use, we are going to use, um, you know, we're going to make our own tire. Why would we make our own tire? The tire has already been made. It is serving a purpose. So we should not have to go back and, and have this inferiority complex. Because everything that they have made came from our science. From the golden age in Baghdad and Iraq and all this time, that it was the Muslim scholars that took knowledge from the books of every other civilization and translated it into Arabic. And then you say, well, we can't take from other cultures, but hello, 
Our culture was formed from taking the knowledges from the Persians who were fire worshippers. They took it from the Greeks who worshipped Zeus and Neptune and Pluto and all these other, you know, so-called gods. And then the knowledge of um, temperaments came from Socrates and Hippocrates, all these people. And then hijama, the knowledge of hijama came from where? It came from the Egyptians. It came from the Chinese. Where did the knowledge of of uh, Tib, you know, some of the knowledge of Tib came from where? It came from India. They used swords, okay, and the blade was called Hind. And you know, India at that time, in the, in the, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu was a superpower. It was a superpower to the extent that the Arabs used to love that superpower so much that they used to name their children after that country, Hind. And so we're saying, well, you can't take from them. What planet are you on? Why do you think that, you know, Allah has made us just, Allah is saying that we made you from, from nations and tribes so you may know one another. Not that you may fight one another and cut others off, subhanAllah. How, how are you going to go and call these people to your deen? This deen of mercy, this deen of love, this deen of submission. Yet you are the jahil who's standing in the way, stopping people from coming into your deen. Ajib. So people, get over it, right? There are affirmations. As long as you attach, Alhamdulillah, bi'idhnillah, insha'Allah, you know, you are relying on the fact, okay? And this is, is, a, is a crux point, is that nothing is going to happen in your life except that Allah wills it. Nothing is going to happen in your life except that Allah allows it. And so you can sit here and say, I am great, I am great, I am great, bi'idhnillah. But it will only happen as and when Allah wills it to. And either it will be given to you as a gift or it will be given to you as a test. Either it will make you or it will be there to break you. And this is what we really need to connect to. We need to understand and understand one thing very clearly. Just because you read affirmations does not mean your life is going to be successful. Affirmations are the same as when you are trying to make dua. When you make a dua, Ya Allah, give me shifa. Ya Allah, give me shifa. Okay, so a person is making dua for shifa. Ya Allah, shifa, tears are coming down. But they are not taking any action with regards to seeking that shifa. The Prophet ﷺ said that for every illness there is a cure, which means you need to go and look for the cure. But if you're going to sit there now, now look, I'm going to, I feel like having tea. Okay, I want to dip a biscuit in it. I'll sit here and make some dua or, or some sheikh gave me some, some tasbih to do. If you pray this 36 times, you will get tea coming to you, right? If I do this and I wait for that tea, it's not going to come. Either I go down and make my cup of tea or I request that my wife or someone, you know, brings me up a cup of tea. I have made a dua, Ya Allah, I see, I wish for tea. Now I need to stand up, take action. And similarly, if you are suffering and if you have got a problem and if you know that your mindset is negative, that everything that passes through your mind is the way that your body is going to respond. The person who has negative thoughts all day and they see life to be negative, what do you think, what state do you think that they are going to be in? They are going to be in a depressed state. They're going to be in a negative state. The body will not be healing. But if a person who is already feeling that way but changes their mindset, I now turn towards the mercy of Allah. I now turn in dua that Allah will facilitate for me that I can heal. That's fine. That's part one. Part two, he needs to shift. He needs to do something different in order now to be able to feel that change coming into his body. The moment you smile, the moment you smile, smile. The moment you smile, your body chemistry changes. Your brain now has to release oxytocin. It needs to start releasing this hormone that is going to have a physical effect on your body. So if you are going to sit in your home and just, you know, just be irritated, and, eh, I'm making so much dua, nothing happens. Okay, just calm down, slow down. Look at what you are doing and look at all the fatwas of kufr and haram you throw upon other people. Look at your own insecurities. Look, and, and ultimately most of these people are so insecure within themselves that they really need to go and, and find a decent therapist. Okay, it's fine reading Quran. You read your Quran, the Quran serves a purpose. You read Salah, the Salah serves a purpose. But 
within that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always tells you find out more فَاسْعَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Go and ask the people of knowledge about that which you do not know. And so when you, you know, and, and um, one of the great scholars, subhanAllah, was it Imam Malik or Imam Abu Hanifa, that a Jewish man came to him and he said, you know, your Quran says that, you know, there is no uh, knowledge within the, within the whole of the creation that is not enveloped in the Quran. And he says, yes, that's true. And so he said, okay, tell me, how much bread does a bag of flour make? How much bread does a bag of flour make? And so Imam Abu Hanifa told one of whichever the scholar was, told uh, asked for the local baker to come. And when the baker came, he says, "Tell me how many bags, uh, how many breads can you make? Uh, loaves of bread can you make from a bag of flour?" And he said, "Well, if it's a big bag, you make twenty. If you've got a medium bag, you'll make fifteen. If it's a small bag, you can make ten. And so he told that to that person, and he goes, "But." That's, that's not in the Quran. You asked him. But the scholar said, Well, Allah says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people who know about that which you do not. Okay? The Sufis would like to say, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ is only the people of dhikr. You know, so you've got to be very multi-pious. But subhanAllah, the scholar, mashallah, has shown us that it, it is to do with dunya also. And so if, if, you know, you being extremely pious and everything is haram in your life, and your car breaks down, do not take it to the mechanic. Okay, and especially don't take it to a non-Muslim mechanic. No, 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 no. You need to pray until the car becomes fine again. Okay, if you're driving your car and the car breaks down, if you're driving down and the car breaks down, and then you say, okay, um, you know, we need to fix this. And, and you know what's gone wrong. Some part of the engine has actually fallen out. But you just get some people to push the car. Keep pushing it. And now you say, oh, it's working. It's working again. This is not how it works, people. We are just fooling ourselves into thinking we're doing the right thing by blocking out certain knowledges that will actually be of use to us. And this is what our frustration is. This is what we need to create awareness about. That one, every, um, you know, every student of knowledge, every student of Islamic knowledge must undergo a certain amount of training in mental health awareness. They need to understand this. They need to be able to, to uh, you know, connect to the anxiety and the stress and the challenges that people in their communities are facing on a daily basis. And subhanAllah, today I had a call from an imam up north and he said, brother, and he subhanAllah did the workshop. He did the Afia healing workshop. He attended it. He, he, he promoted it in his community. And he said to me, he says, I'm getting a lot of people in our community, especially with the lockdown and people losing their jobs, that the level of anxiety is going up. So what do you suggest we can do? And so we had this discussion. I said, look, open up the masjid and, and let the community know. Anyone who's got anxiety, anyone's got stress, anyone's got these issues, they can come to the mosque and the people that we have trained in your locality, they can sit there as therapists and work with your community. Subhanallah. This is what we need, people. We don't want everyone just to, you know, keep saying, well, pray some more, make more sabr, pray some more, do this. No, you do all of that. We are doing all of that. And all of these people that are miserable and are, you know, severely blinkered are praying a lot. They are crying and they're getting up for tahajjud. And, but why is that bitterness not leaving you? Why is that insecurity not leaving you? Why is it that you're so bitter because... You are probably controlled by a narcissist as well. What's going on? Keep your insecurities to yourself. But if you want help, put your hand out. We will reach out and we will help you. So the affirmations, not a problem. Affirmations, not a problem. Utilize them, but don't go towards shirk. Simple. Don't say, I am in control of my destiny. Because you bloody not. Allah is in control of what comes to you and what goes from you. But what Allah gave us was free will. And Allah gave us the ability to choose. Allah gave us the ability to say, Ya Allah, I need this. Ya Allah, make means for me to go and seek this. You know, a person wants to become a doctor, right? But then I'm not going to that university because there's non-Muslims there. Because there's free mixing there. Duh! Subhanallah. And then when you want to go to the doctor, then you won't ask whether it's a female or it's a male. And, you know, ajib. And then you've got, you know good Muslim doctors, male doctors that are gynecologists. 
Okay, and then the women are sent there, go, show. <laughs> Astaghfirullah. Hypocrisy on every level. Double standards through and through. And we really need to fix up. We need to understand who we are. Okay? We need to understand who we are because we're just fooling ourselves in thinking that we are pious and in showing that piety behind we sit and we cry. We cry till we go to sleep, isn't it? It's a shame. It's a shame. May Allah guide you. May Allah soften your hearts. May Allah allow us to understand that our deen is not restricted. Our deen is open. Our deen allows us to, to fully be functional human beings. That the need of every person is very different. No two people are the same. No two people are the same. And so you need to understand people that if you want to practice something, understand it properly from the people of that knowledge. Okay, if I want to learn about um, hikmah, you know, traditional herbal medicine, I will go to a hakim and I will ask him what is your suggestion regarding this and I will get that advice. If I want to know about online marketing, I will go to a person who deals with online marketing and say, can you help me with this? Okay, and, and these are the professionals in that field. But if you need your personal shifts, your personal healing, then go and find someone that can help you. And this is something, alhamdulillah, we've been doing for the last 12, 13, 14 years. And alhamdulillah, countless of people, alhamdulillah, are being helped, that they are being moved on. So find the right people to gain that right knowledge from. Don't be blinkered, don't be shallow, okay? Don't be hating from the depths of your own personal emotional baggage and insecurities because ultimately you continue to destroy your own soul and you are stopping other people from benefiting and moving out of the holes that they are stuck in. So I hope inshallah that this is making some sense, that it is okay for you to use affirmations but just add on to them, inshallah, bi idhnillah, alhamdulillah, okay? And know ultimately that despite whatever affirmation you use, the final, um, you know, switch to say yes is in the hands of Allah always. Allah is our provider. Allah is our provider. So nothing else and he's in charge, but we have the choice of doing that. So our deen is affirmation. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah is our affirmation. All the Rabbana du'as, our affirmation. Okay? The Sunnah du'as of morning and evening, repeat them three times, affirmation. If you have problems, okay? Anyone has problems, anyone stuck with anything, pick this up, read Hasbunallah wa Ni'mal Wakil 450 times. 450 times, Hasbunallah wa Ni'mal Wakil, Hasbunallah wa Ni'mal Do this for a week and see what happens. Your, your mindset and your whole... A path, your blockages will clear out of your way. Okay, and again, if you are if you are overcome, okay, by hunger, by fear, by uh, loss, then what is your dhikr? Your your affirmation is Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Okay, because that dhikr is for musiba. It is not just that someone dies. Anyone has a car accident, they tell you the news, Inna lillahi rajiun. I looked at this picture today and you know part of our Birmingham city subhanallah is flooded inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun huh? who died no one's died there's a musiba okay allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when there's a musiba qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun say to allah we belong and to him is our return ulaika alayhim salawatu mir rabbihim wa rahma that when you say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun then the response to that from allah is that his salam and the salam of the angels is coming down upon you giving us peace, giving us closure. And so our deen is all of affirmations. Our deen is everything, okay? Only if we understood it. And the sad reality is that because it's not being taught in this way, openly to the Muslims, then we are having to go elsewhere to learn this knowledge. And unfortunately, many people are being led astray. And so when the fatwas are you know, issued with regards to using affirmations and all of these things, it is based on the people that lost their path. So we, alhamdulillah, with Afia Healing, um, you know, offer these workshops, offer these courses, and we help and we guide and we connect the dots. Okay, what's happening in the West and what's happening in our deen, these are the links. Okay, we find most of the things that are happening out there, such as NLP, um, hypnotherapy, 
uh, all of these you know general modalities that are out there they fit perfectly well within the deen the whole concept of mindfulness fits perfectly well within the deen okay our deen is mindfulness and then the haters will say well it's a buddhist concept no it's not it's a human concept it is a fitra concept are supposed to be mindful in the way that we look in mindful in the what we listen to mindful in the way what we are feeling mindful about what we eat because it has to be halal mindful about not going to sleep when your when your neighbors are hungry mindful that you know there is a branch in the road so i pick it up and i move it to the side our deen is mindfulness people allah says you know be aware of me the whole time we have to be mindful that allah is with me watching me listening to me isn't it you have to be mindful about salah time. You have to be mindful if you've got wudu. You have to be mindful that the place you are praying and the clothes you are wearing are clean. You have to be mindful about your Allahu Akbar and what surahs you are reading. Mindful about your presence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That even the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart is counted as ibadah. To be mindful that you are reciting your tasbih three times and reciting it ten times, reciting it a hundred times. This is all mindfulness. Our deen is affirmations, our deen is, is, um, is, is repetition, and our deen is mindfulness, people. Okay, every concept that is being practiced out there, before giving it the fatwa of haram, come and find out some more. Come and learn about it more. And there are certain things that I've already spoken about with regards to um, yoga and reiki and all these other, you know, uh, singing bowls and all the rest of it. Fine, stay away from that stuff. It doesn't fit in into the into the shape of our deen okay and it brings about spiritual harm and if you haven't heard that part i'm telling you again yoga will bring you spiritual harm it might have physical benefit and have emotional benefit but spiritually it opens up your energy centers so that those you know dark forces and entities can actually enter within you so please inshallah don't open yourself up to the rubbish and just stick to what we have stick to what we have we have the deen we have our Islam, we have our Salah, we have Sunnah practices. And the, even the other day, I think after I did the first three sessions, many people asked, he says, um, I'm looking for a Sheikh or I need a guide, I need a teacher. Fine, what should I do? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, who is the right person to guide me? You don't need a fancy Sheikh who's, who's up there in, you know, in glitz and glamour with the biggest imama and the, and the you know, most nicest beard and fluffy and you know well scented and robes and you know given all these 15 titles before and after his name no it can be just your local imam who is a sincere individual someone who genuinely you know just guides a few people just gives you and if you want that spiritual experience people if you want that spiritual experience follow the sunnah of the prophet learn to read the duas before and after everything that you do before you eat after you eat before you go to the toilet after you come out of the toilet when you go to sleep when you wake up when you are eat when you're drinking uh, water or you're drinking milk when you're changing your clothes when you see the moon when you just do those duas that will make you spiritual read yasin in the morning mulk at night waqia through the day that is being spiritual follow and implement the sunnahs of the prophet sallallahu this is spiritual you don't need to go beyond this you don't need to go far far away and kiss hands of people and carry their shoes yet you don't want to pick up the shoes of your parents the greatest spirituality above serving a sheikh and you know paying him into his account is serve your parents serve your parents people they need it more the duas that you get from your parents are what's going to throw you into jannah okay that's what's going to throw you into jannah the sheikhs and everyone else you know subhanallah there's you know, may Allah bless the right ones. May Allah bless and raise and increase all the true mashayikh. Okay? But the rest of it for me, you know, in, in 25, 30 years of, of being in the game, I've seen the game. <laughs> and may Allah protect us. May Allah protect us. Yeah? There are some genuine people, alhamdulillah. But, you know, for the majority, it's not so. Seek guidance. Make it, pray istikhara. Ya Allah, I'm seeking a teacher. I'm seeking a guide. Guide me to that. And until you don't find that guide, Increase in sending salawat on the Prophet ﷺ. Increase in sending durood on the Prophet ﷺ. Because when you increase in sending durood on the Prophet 
that spiritual connection is built between you and the Prophet ﷺ. And so guidance automatically flows into you. That hikmah, that wisdom will flow directly into you. And so be sincere. Be sincere in what you are doing and connect your heart to the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. Teach your kids the love of the Prophet ﷺ. Teach them the blessings of the sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ. Read to them about the description of the Prophet ﷺ. And so when you start to love someone, you become engaged with that person, you melt into that person, and the person that you love, you don't really want to upset. And so you are loving the Prophet ﷺ and loving Allah out of love and not out of fear. Love Allah. <laughs> love Allah for with love not out of fear okay so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to really shake off ourselves all these insecurities and please inshallah share this video okay there's tens of thousands of people who are just don't understand what's going on and so inshallah if this can benefit them then may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts of getting this message across to them and inshallah, if there's any further questions, please inshallah send them through and then we will have another discussion, another talk. There's quite a few topics that I still want to touch on. Um, and I'm just hoping that, you know, people are not offended by what I say um, because that is not my intention. I'm not here for fights. I'm here for, um, you know, differentiating between what is right and wrong um, in the best of my knowledge and best of my ability and to show you that our deen is vast and not constricted. Okay, it is not just, you know, you have to be here. No, there is a billion people that live in over 150 countries that have a different understanding of what our deen is. Okay, you just look at you now and look at your grandparents and your grandparents will curse you for saying, ah, look at your hairstyle, look at your clothes, look at this, look at that. Okay, and they'll tell you off for that. But subhanAllah, in our day and age, it's okay. You, you know, it's, it's amazing, like you just have to take a little flight. Well, when we used to be able to take a flight, you take a flight to a different culture, different community, and you look at those people and you say, hmm, that doesn't look like my version of Islam. Do you see that? And so you go into Turkey, you see something else. You go into, um, you go into Malaysia, you see something else. You see Indonesia, something else. You go to, you know, Saudi, it's something else. You go anywhere, it's different. And so, subhanAllah, we need to really connect, Right. And so, yes, there is a course coming up. It's all online now, inshallah. So message me and I'll um, let you know. This weekend, inshallah, the Afya Healing Workshop, two days. Um, so please, uh, yeah, jump on. Become qualified, um, you know, become qualified uh, therapists. Okay, gain the experience. So many people are waiting. So many people are looking for help. And wallahi, 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 you know what? I try, but it's, it's difficult. Okay, so I need more people, inshallah, to become qualified. And inshallah, go and spread the love. Yeah, people are waiting for it. It'll be a khidma to the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Jazakumullah khair for your time. Allah bless you. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashadu Allah ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.